Hey there, everyone. Okay, so we started with the five-step value scale, 0, 30, 50, 70, 100. Then we blended it like a gradient or an ombre. Then we pivoted where we started to think about how to make different kinds of mark-making studies um, and just to play with our brushes, the viscosity of the paint, and always trying to keep our 150, 70, 30, 0 um, so they don't get muddy gray. Um, I then went in and talked about on this one how I drew over with a Faber-Castell felt tip marker and then a white gel pen. Um, and then this is what we're about to make in a second. And I had circled this. I traced um, the painted sphere with a black Posca. Where did I put my Posca? I lost it. Oh, here it is. Um, and then did these little polka dots and I could keep drawing all over this and doing different things to make it feel more resolved. So here's my white Posca. And I can do all kinds of things. If you imagine that I fill in this background I've um, with these broken stripes, I have then effectively lightened the background, making it a little less muddy and creating a little bit more of a sense of resolve. With very minimal effort, so kind of an efficiency, but it makes the, the kind of more painterly gestural or what you might want to call messy painting, feel like it's there on purpose. Cool, right? Okay. So let's color the ball. So when we do this, we want to often, this isn't how all painters always paint, but a good way to think about it is you start with the negative space, the boring, move into the next most important, and then the subject last. Again, that's not how I always need to do it, but it's a really good way um, to kind of build your confidence with the, with the surface and to set your value range. So I've got my trusty um, half inch flat acrylic and I'm gonna grab a ton of white um, and I'm just gonna load this up. I actually want more, so I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna put it right on the surface. Put a little more on my palette. Um, and I'm going to cut, just kind of like priming the surface. I'm not being super careful yet. And I'm going to cut into this um, a 30 so that I can set my value range. There's a big hunk of paint here that I want to kind of move out of the way. Um, okay. So I've got my whole negative space painted in approximately 30 seconds with just really super goopy white paint. I'm gonna grab a little 30. There's that mother color where I move the white into the, the gray. And I'm just cross hatching, being kind of painterly. When I cut around a form, I'm going to use the side of the flat and I'm going to move the paper to do what I want it to do. Painting is so fun because you kind of like meditate through it. Take deep breaths so you can have control and so forth. What we're trying to do here is trying to have a um, highlight light, shadow, reflected light, core shadow, um, cast shadow, and so forth. Um, we wanna try and get rid of any kind of predictable mark making or outlines for now. And by painting that background so fast, that negative space, I've just set the tone for this to be right now, what we would call a high key painting, meaning high key value that it's gonna be light. and I'd used a lot of white. 
you could totally pivot and do the whole negative space really dark. And then you would have the sense of chiaroscuro where it's light out of darkness. But I went this way. Okay, so most boring, super negative space. Now I'm gonna move into the next boring um, and I'm gonna pivot into my 50. You could tape straight edges here. You could let that negative space dry and cut it with a piece of tape. You can freehand it. So again, I'm painting pretty quick. If my paint's too sticky, I'm gonna just dip my brush in a little water and that helps the viscosity or the flow of the paint work a little better. Think back to your mark making exercises and how you wanted to scumble things or if you wanted to flood and wash things. Um, so I grabbed some black, I'm gonna do my shadow. So I'm moving into my next kind of important thing. Your cast shadows are gonna be value scales. There'll be a, an ombre, if you will. Um, so I go from my 100 to my 70. I'll go to my 50. I'm gonna scrape out the paint because I have too much in there. Get my brush wet a little to reactivate some of this lighter gray. And I'm thinking back to those mark making studies and how I want to try to blend or kind of pivot and shift my shadow. As it works. Okay, so there's my cast shadow kind of flying away and then I move into my figure um, my positive shape so I'm gonna mix up a little more 30 I kind of ran out notice here I mixed with my brush and I know I'm kind of coming to the end of this exercise so I'm being a little more loose with my contaminating probably shouldn't but and then I'm gonna set the value range on my ball using a kind of fast mark, um, just to kind of get it started. I'm gonna shift to my 70, dragging with the side of the brush. Building that edge. And I'm trying really hard not to have any white paper show because that'll really flatten your thing. Okay, so here's where the cross hatching comes in. You want to get rid of any of those weird lines or it's not to say you couldn't do this with like a strong cell shading like the five step value scale um, that works too this is where you again you go back to looking at painting examples that you like and then be a detective and say how do i think that person made that mark and then you try it and then i'm gonna um rinse out my brush and I'm going to grab white and I want to have what I call lost and found open and closed over here so I'm going to use white quite a bit where I kind of want the white to disappear into that lighter background and then cross hatch. All right, this is too abrupt, so I'm gonna grab a little 30, maybe a little 50, just a little. I'm gonna wipe off my brush because it was too much. It's almost like sculpting with cake frosting. I'm gonna do that thing where I squirt it barely one little squirt it kind of reactivates so I can get that softer value shift and that kind of ombre within the space and I'm going to leave it like that 
um, for now. And then knowingly when it dries, I can come in and keep drawing over it and doing different things. I could paint way back into this. Like if I'm not sure that I think my shadow is working well enough, I'm gonna get my filbert, that rounded one. So this is totally dry from the other day. And I'm gonna go back in and put another layer of shadow. to kind of darken. Um, so it's like there's these works in progress that you can kind of keep building and building. Kind of wipe that off. There we go. Okay. Um, so have fun making these exercises and then we'll meet back and we'll work on some color. Okay. See you soon. Thanks.